everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, today I'm going to help you guys pick who I think um, should be female teams. Um, yeah, uh, so Super Coach 2021 obviously just opened. This video is meant to go up last week, but unfortunately I, um, I went on a trip uh, for the weekend. I was going from Saturday to Thursday, and obviously today is Friday. Um, so I'm finally back, and uh, now I can finally make this video for you guys. Um, yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm baffled. I, I just recorded for 40 minutes and it didn't work, so I'm a bit frustrated because there's 70 slides in this thing. Um, so yeah, this is uh, best picks from each team. So best options, uh, mid price slash pods, rookies, and who to avoid. So once again, for me, let's get into it. North uh, North Melbourne, our best option is Luke McDonald. Um, average 95.9 in 2020, averaging 118.4 for around 8 to 2020. Uh, ben, next one, Ben Cunnington. Um, yeah, this man was superb in 2019. Um, uh, obviously, he's got tapped a lot. Um, but only played three games last year, even though he still averaged decent. Got 185 in one of those games, and the partial of his teammate Sean Higgins can help him get back on track. Um, next uh, rookie is uh, for rookies, Will Phillips. Uh, pick third in 2020 draft, averaged 22 disposals for the Chargers. He's a tough, hard working midfielder, physically inside. Physical inside midfield, you can also push forward. He's a consistent ball getter. Um, that was created by the AFL. Uh, however, had a niggling in knee injury uh, through the first half of 2020, which means a reoccurrence, a very annoying injury, which could affect him throughout the year. Um, definitely. So, yeah, keep an eye out for that. Um, so, yeah, he may be not injury prone, but he may have a few issues. Uh, yeah, he's door mate, what they're supposed to be. Uh, Tom Power, pick 13 in the 2020 draft. Uh, average 35 disposal under 18 level, and he's considered ball magnet has clean hands around stoppages, which could help him. Um, Lockie Young, I put in the rookies because he's age 21, but obviously he's had a few um, years in the uh, few years in the system. Uh, yeah, as he's picked six in 2018 draft, no further ability intercept and rebound. It should go straight into north side. Make sure to keep an eye on him, uh, as he obviously is very good. Um, Mid price slash pods. Yeah, I mean Jack Siebel is probably the main one. Of the year for me personally, he's in my team right now. Obviously, he's a forward. I didn't put it in because I'm stupid, didn't realize. Um, likely to move to the back line, has apparently had a good preseason. Uh, Chip Rice could be a decent pick. North Melbourne coach has stated that uh, Zebel moving defense is something we've certainly been looking at. Um, I think he helps uh, shape uh, shape our ball movement across the half back line. Has great experience and reads the ball really well. Uh, I'm not saying we're completely invested, uh, it's just at the point in time, but really like what we've seen. Uh, alongside the likes of Ben Cunnington, Dom Tyson, and Kane Turner, he's back to full fitness. Um, he's had a good preseason and could help him. Um, this is from North Melbourne on their website uh, with Coach David Noble. So um, yeah, I told Goldstein, yeah, he, he's a good player, but um, he's he's always been second best to Grundy and Gorn. So I reckon Grundy Gorn's the way to go, but he is. That's why he I put him in the pot options because you know Grundy Gorn's always open. Um, Trent and Janice, now put this in the same because they're basically the same. In the same boat, so they both had breakout years in 2020. And Demont averaging 1 at 1.2, Jen Anderson 1 at 4.7, um, and hopefully they can improve and uh, come off the back of that year. Uh, who to avoid? Jai Simkin. Uh, the Pansy lost his DPP status, uh, ruling him out for the 2020 season, uh, uh, 2021 season as a starter. After inconsistent 2021, yeah, he, I would avoid. So Pollock, um, yeah, he didn't live up to the hype from his move from Port Adelaide. Hasn't reached his expectations in 2020 is his really season, worst season yet. Like even North Melville though, because he was dropped multiple times. Um, yeah, but he is an option. On to LA Crows. Uh, the best option is probably Laird, defender mid uh, 564.8k. Uh, Laird had a shaky start of 2020, but got moved into the midfield for the second half of the year and was elite, averaging 105.1. For the year, he, uh, for the year and hit the ton seven out of the last uh, nine rounds. One of them was a buy, so technically seven out of eight. His DPP status is the, the and the departure of big mid Brad Crouch has ensured him to be a lock of the defence in 2021. Yeah, the DPP status can really help. That's the main thing because, um, you know, if you get an injury in the midfield, you could move him back. And then if in the defence, you could move him back in the defence. It's just very useful to have. Um, Matt Crouch. Yeah, Crouch went under the radar in 2020 as he averaged 110.7 and has averaged over 100 for the past four years. So it's time people jump on him. He's also hit the ton 13 out of 16 rounds he played last year. And his brother Levy may be set for him to be a prime midfielder of the year. This man, I'd be, I'm considering for my team, he is very underrated. Um, and he's very good. And yeah, crowd, his brother Levy could, um, could set him off. 
Uh, for rookies, yeah, James Rowe, 4.96k. I'm not sure if that's true. I honestly don't know. But um, Pika, 38 in the 22 draft. He averaged two, uh, 2.8 goals. Um, I'm sorry, I've got the recording thing in the way, so I can't see. He averaged some some type of disposals in the Sandfield. And is in the conversation potentially starting realm off of the Crows. Um, yeah, Sam Berry, uh, picked at 28th in the 2020 draft. Sam has been described as a consistent inside midfielder with a great contested ball winning abilities, defensive pressure, and endurance. Uh, this was said by Peter Williams, who is a draft analyzer. He is known to be good at tack. Uh, Berry is known to be good at tackling, which will provide him with a lot of points throughout the year. Um, yeah, this report is from AFL Draft Central. So if you like, if you like to see the full analysis of Berry, just type up AFL Draft Central, Sam Berry. And you can see the full thing. Uh, Riley Thielthorpe. Um, obviously, he's no, he's only in contention for his forward status. He's rock, he's in, or, unless you want to put him on your bench. But um, yeah, this one speaks for himself. Riley being picked two in the 2020 draft makes him a prospect to be looked at in 2020. Sorry, it's very really stuck in my room. I'm going to put my hair on. Um, he's also had a spell on the wing. Uh, yeah, he could be in the main uh, target on four next attacks and could be in the rock when it runs on the bench. He also has, a, has, has had a spell on the wing in his time for the sample, however, 202k for a key forward, just like Ugo Hagen, which I'll talk about later, may just not be worth it. Um, on to mid price slash pods, uh, Wayne Miller. Uh, Miller started off 2020 with a 96 and 70 average in 83 and looked to have a decent season, but injury stopped him and was announced out of the season as he had to get foot surgery. He's one to keep an eye on throughout the preseason and that cup at his price could be a good option if you want to take that risk. Uh, Sloan. Sloan's been a good option for many years as he averaged over 100 from 2012 to 2017 and did in 2019 as well. Unfortunately, in 2020, with a few injury problems, Sloan had a rough season as he averaged 87.8, uh, which was his worst season since 2011. With the departure of Brad Crouch, look out for him to bounce back just like the Crows. Um, Donnie and Smith, I'll put them in the same because, uh, I mean, these two may be some of the most inconsistent defenders and have many injuries, but if they can get a good preseason and stay fit, they could be good options. Obviously, Smith, I guess... Uh, goes over due, due, due to his mid uh, price. Sorry if I'm talking really fast, but um, it's seven minutes in, I'm only on the second team, so I, I'm trying to go as fast as I can. If you guys want to just skip through and look at the options and read yourself, be my guest. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, Jackson Haley Boyd, the biggest one. So Alex Mann has finally got the opportunity to show what he can really do in a new club and new colors with a solid mid price, and considering how expensive everyone is this year, could be an option to look at if you can't afford any primos. Uh, on to Richmond Tigers, um, best options, yeah, Dusty. Uh, Dusty didn't have the best season in terms of Supercoach in 2020, as although he averaged 100, it was frustrating having him on our teams and for his inconsistency and constantly being tagged. But in terms of Richmond, he is the best player there, so. And due to lack of forwards, we might honestly have to consider. James Short, uh, Short had his breakout last year and put himself for selection this year as the Tigers' best and fairest averaged 96.6 and can hopefully build off that, although he looks more of an upgrade option as, you know, Lloyds, you know, Lloyds, you know, Stewart's. Your lads, your Whitfields are just better. Uh, rookies, yeah, RCD, I mean, he's been in the running for a long time. Uh, I've been many, told many times that he will play eventually. Surely this year has to be easier. I say stick him on your bench and uh, go from there. Um, Come Common Jones, yeah. Uh, due to Solder's injury, he may be selected, so, and with the DDP stat DPP status, keep an eye on him. Uh, Morris Rowe Jr. Ah, uh, yeah, Rowe's been a fan favorite of the Tigers, and going late in the draft has put his price down. In the same like his father, he is someone to consider. He can most likely play late in the season, but knowing Richmond with the Aurelis, who knows? I say, you know, keep an eye on him. Uh, Basher Hui, um, Hui had a bad season last year, but only averaging, I'm not sure I can't say. <laughs> um, I guess 80s, I'm not sure. Uh, but Belly played due to personal reasons, and his main role was taken by Short. But for him being back, he may take his spot back and be prime for another season like 2019, and he's a cheaper price compared to other premium defenders, making him very tender to select. Same thing can be said about Dion Preston. The Hugh Meatball has always been under the radar and is looking to bounce back after uh, after only playing five years due to injury. Uh, though he averaged only 92 in those games, uh, just like Hoy, he's looking to bounce back to the 2019 form and averaged where he averaged 101.3. Uh, Shy Bolton, forward mid. Uh, 462.4. Uh, Shai had a breakout season last year as he burst into the midfield of the Tigers due to injuries and was very impressive, averaging 86.1. However, Tigers getting players back may push him into the forward line, so this pick is very risky and honestly, I do not recommend it. Who will avoid Pickett? Pickett did his job, he made money. He's not this year. Uh, Sydney Stack, um, obviously, he's going to jail, so he's not. 
Want to call him Matt Pryce, Taylor Adams. Um, Adams had his best year season in 2020 with only averaging uh, one uh, with averaging one and nine point six, and only got four times without a ton of the 17 games he played. And now those games were draw. Uh, but with the departure of Adam Chalor, he's considered to be a lock in most teams and prepared to top last season. To us, I think he's a lock in your teams. Brody Grundy, um, same with this man, he's a lock. Uh, yeah, he's been he's the partners are gone. He must be in your team. Side bottom, uh, he went on the radar, averaged 1 and 9.4, only played 9 games, obviously got suspended and him and his wife had a baby. Um, due to his DPP status, he could be an option. Uh, rookies, uh, Will Kelly. Um, yeah, forget about Will Kelly. Uh, apparently he injured his calf. So yeah, if he plays, then yeah, maybe down the line, but no, no it can't be a star now. Um, Finlay McRae. Um, Picked at 19 and 2020 draft, McCray looks to be selection during his DPP status. And he is a ball magnet. If he is a ball magnet like his brother, Jack McCray, then he should be looking at teams. Obviously, the departure of Adam Trelaw could give him the opportunity. Um, Oliver Henry, pick at 17 and draft. Henry seems to be someone that fights one in their team. Uh, keep an eye for this man. I don't know much about him, but um, yeah, you know, he if he goes in the fall, then he could make some cash. Uh, Mid price slash pods, uh, yeah, Scott Pendlebury, yeah, probably the most consistent player. Uh, for the last like 15 years, you know, uh, this man's performed well, so well since day one, and someone's a potential player in your team, but always seems to have a lot of ownership making in the pod. The man's averaged over 100, sorry, uh, since 2008, this man is the real deal. Uh, on to Brandon Maynard. Uh, Maynard had his best year in uh, 2020 by averaging 102.5, but was a bit inconsistent towards the end of the year with getting three scores out of the four, last four under a ton. Still a good option, but they're better players to start, in my opinion. Who to avoid? Jordan Dugowie. Dugowie unfortunately didn't have the best season. He only averaged 6 games in the home way season. And with an average of 81, keep in mind that he got a 151 in one of those 6 games, um, which carried his average. There are many forwards, but this injury, but injury prone Dugowie is not the way to go, I wouldn't. Uh, how? Look, yeah, he came, he's come off with an ACL. He was sent to be one of the best defenders here, but obviously he did his ACL. Um, and it's no longer an option, it's sad to say. Uh, mid 620.9k. Uh, Merrin had his best season in 2020 with an average of 115.6 and is the highest price midfield of the year. Uh, he's definitely someone to look at. Same with Jordan Ridley. I mean, he had his best year with a 101.9. If you can follow it up with his interceptability, uh, definitely someone to consider. Um, Archie Perkins. Sorry. <laughs> oh, this is a lot of talking. Um, Archie Perkins, mid forward. 171.3. Perkins was picked ninth in the 2020 draft and has played full time midfield in the last few years. And with Essendon struggling, he could be the perfect option for them. Get some game time, generate some cash. So with Nick Cox, uh, he was picked eight. Um, so I was meant to say Cox. He plays as a tall forward slash defender and has averaged 100, average uh, 11.6 disposals and 4.5 marks in his 10 match. He played in the uh, league in 2019. He's someone that should start your team. Uh, Dyson, Dyson Heppel. Heppel's had a spell of injuries which forced him to only play three games in 2020. This has dropped his price massively, um, and if he gets a good preseason going and gets back to his best of average in at least 90 like he had done from 2013 to 2019, and his price here could be a serious option. Um, McGrath, uh, obviously both these guys are midfielders. Uh, the former number one draft pick has finally come into, into his own and has, has had a top season last year and Ending the year with an average of 94.9. Keep in mind the season was ended due to injury in the game where he got 29 due to it. Uh, a bit too expensive in my opinion, but a, at least a start. Uh, but if you want to take that risk of having a massive problem and grow, it could be your man. We, I don't even want to talk about this man again. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't want to see him ever again. Yeah, he was supposed to be a sole pick last year and flopped five times out of 16. No. Uh, onto Fremantle Dockers, uh, best option is not five. Five is just five. The man's average over 100 for the past seven years and is always in contention. We wish he had a mid forward status like he should. Um, however, uh, hopefully he can hopefully he can get back to full time midfield and stay fit to be a selection. Uh, Luke Ryan. Ryan had his, uh, his best season yet, averaging one over 7.3 last year. Um, hopefully he can follow it up with another great season. Uh, he's the second last price defender for a reason, although, no. <laughs> Uh, Michael Walters. Walters had a decent two season with an average of 100.8 and 98.9 and with the lack of 40, someone to look at before the start of the year.
Uh, rookies here, Chapman. Uh, pick the 14 in the draft. Chapman is said to be a solid pick and there's no fruit in the same market, which is very good. Super coach. For super coach, uh, he should be starting your teams. Um, Volante, yeah, he's been fine for a long for a spot for a long time now, age of 20 and performing on the waffle. This may be easier to break into the Fremantle side and make his mark. Keep out, keep an eye out for this man in preseason. Mid uh, mid price slash pods, yeah, break sure. He had a breakout year, but um, he lost his DPV status, so hopefully he can improve in next year. Maybe an option. Um, who to avoid? David Mundy, yeah, Mundy has an average of 100 since 2015, and he's very expensive, so no. Lob and Darcy, Grundy one better. Pretty simple. Uh, onto Carlton. Uh, Crips has had an average 2020 season, had injury problems, didn't perform at the level, but looking back to bounce back and at a cheap price compared to other primos, neither still. It's just a matter of whether he can get that 2019 form back. If so, get him in your teams. Um, sources from Supercoach Royalty themselves have said that um, Patrick Crips is apparently training the same way he did in 2019. Um, if he gets back to it, so that means he wants to play like that, obviously, and get back to that form, well, how can you, how can you look past him? Uh, Zach Williams. Williams moved to Carlton during the trade period and is set for a great year, and he's most likely to play midfield for the Blues. Uh, if Williams can stay fit and get a good presence and go in, he could be a lock. Uh, rookies, uh, Corey Durden. Durden was selected by Carlton to pick 37 in 2020 draft. Corey can play forward and mid and was named the best player in the NAB AFL and under 16 championships in 2016. Uh, with some games in that sample, he is likely to play for the Blues this year. Get the least on your bench. Uh, same with Jack Carroll, pick 41 in draft. He's considered one of the best midfielders in the country. That's according to the AFL website. That, that's literally a quote. That's what it says when you look at Jack Carroll. Uh, he averaged, as he averaged, uh, 23 disposals a, a game in lawful. Uh, Sam Walsh here, he had a great second half of the season after he didn't come for six six rounds. An average averaging 101.1, and he's the most expensive blue players of the year, but um, he's considered a most of the time because people will overlook him. Uh, Saad, yeah, Saad is, the most inconsistent, is a very inconsistent, inconsistent defender, but has had his best season 2020, averaging 97.9, and a new club with much promise he could take, take that one step further and push to be a top six defender. Here to avoid, uh, Doherty. Yeah, he, he just fell off last year and is too injury prone, so I wouldn't trust him. Uh, Mark Murphy, he had his time, he didn't do well last year, he's an option. Pin that, he did his job last year, made cash, but um, if we consider him over Gorn and Grundy, he must reconsider. Uh, West Coast, best options. Uh, Nick Nui, he was back at his best in 2020, averaging 1 10.5. Is the only other option realistically to Grundy. If you can stay fit last year, stay fit like last year, um, he's the only realistic person to Grundy. But I'm still picking Grundy in my opinion. Uh, Gaff, uh, he had a good 2020. Has been good by averaging over 100 for the past three years. His time on ground helps massively as he gets at least 90% uh, time on ground every game, which allows him to get as many disposals. Uh, so yeah, he's very good, a very fit player um, in terms of fitness. <laughs> Uh, Elliot Yo, uh, Yo had an inconsistent 2020, which is why his price is so low for someone whose quality injuries are also held him up. But if Yo can get back to his 2019 2018 form, then with that price, it will be hard to look past him. Uh, rookies, not many for West Coast, but um, there's one that is uh, Luke Foley. Foley played one match last year in round 18, wasn't his best, but with the experience in the year under his belt, decent preseason, it could be in contention. Uh, Mid price slash pods, Alex Witherden. Uh, defender 456.1k. Uh, Within only played six games but did well in those games by averaging 94.3, and one of those games was a 170 in round nine. Now that a new club, Witherden looks to build off that and put himself out there with the defenders. Keep an eye on this man. Uh, Mark Hudgens. Yeah, this is a this is an odd pick, but the West Coast Tigers had a few shocking seasons and has only averaged 29 in 2020 with three games, which dropped his price massively. He has job security as he plays most weeks, and even with him getting 50s, that's good enough to make some cash, which is crazy, and it could be something special in terms of making cash. Who to avoid? Uh, Josh Kennedy. Yeah, um, yeah, his price might look tempting, but don't be in forward. I mean, at the end of the day, he is a tall forward, and he averaged 60s over the past two years, and he can get three tons in a row like he did last year, and a 46 and 11 month later, I would stay clear. Same with Hearn. Um, Hearn, yeah, he's just too old now. Um, there are better options. Tom Sheed. Uh, yeah, the 2018 year is inconsistent, you cannot trust him, he isn't worth the risk, and from his average of 89.1 in 2020, he isn't worth the price. 
Yeah, I was looking at him putting him in pods, but I look at his score, I'm like, why would everyone, why would anyone actually consider this man? Like, because the guy has, is not good. Um, on to Hawthorne, uh, best options is Tom Mitchell. Yeah, I mean, Tom Mitchell is based on himself, the handball merchant. Um, but however, I, according to AFL, he hasn't done a full training yet. I'm not sure if that's true. I'm not saying it hasn't, but yeah, it's a bit concerning. But yeah. Uh, rookies, yeah, Maginus, uh, Finn made his debut last year in round 17 and didn't perform that well, but he is someone to watch over preseason and is apparently in contention for round one. Um, Denver Granger Barris, um, pick 6 in 2020 draft, uh, he is set, uh, for this year as a departure of falling sister injuries put him in the thick of it this year and has job security because of it, he should be a start in your team. Uh, Connor Downey, yeah, he went late in the draft at 30, uh, 35, but is predicted to go between 15 and 30, he strengths in kicking and breaking the lines, Make it very tempting at his price to at least put him on the bench. Yeah, apparently this man is high really, highly rated, but went very late for some reason, for some unknown reason. Um, pods slash mid price. Um, Jacob Miro. He's always been second best at Tom Mitchell. Sorry, excuse me. And it seems to average 90s, but he could take that one step further this year. Uh, then he could be. If you can that one step further, then he could be someone to put on the watch list. Uh, Tom Phillips. Phillips moved to the Hawks, there's many people keeping an eye on him, and with the departure of Isaac Smith, he's set to be a player to fill that spot. And with his DPP status, obviously he's a forward mid, sorry I haven't put it there, uh, he could be an option in the forward line, make sure to watch his pre season. Good avoid. Um, Segler, I mean, Gordon Gone the every many day. Uh, Chamming Guard. Yeah, he was set for a rebirth when he moved to the Hawks, but ultimately flopped an average 84.2. Uh, yeah, you can see the others. John Padden, he's just too injury prone. It's not worth the risk. Uh, James is silly, obviously, did his ACL, so he won't be playing for you. Uh, Prisma has best options. Uh, obviously, Lockie Neal. The Brandon Miller set to follow up his best season yet. Uh, he's the one player that must be in your team. The price is high, but it's worth someone who averages 134.4. Yeah, he has to be there. If, if not, then you're doing something wrong. Uh, Jared Lyons. Lyons had a breakout season in 2020, averaging uh, 112.5, making him one of the top midfielders of the year. Last year he was a pod, this year he should be a start for your team. Uh, rookies, uh, Cockatoo, yeah, he moved from Geelong to start fresh, he'll finally get some games going. If he can stay fit, he's a lock rookie that everyone should have, he could be this year's Marley and Pickett. Derek Robertson, uh, Robertson made his debut last year, unfortunately couldn't hold his spot, but with a year on his belt and in contention for the first round, he could make a name for himself. Yeah, according to sources, um, he is, he apparently will play, according to Supercoach Royalty, <laughs> but he will play, so. Uh, Pods slash mid price. Um, it's all goes DPP status has made him an interesting pick for the year, and with the lack of forwards this year, he could be in contention for selection. He hasn't averaged under 90 since 2013, and with the lowest being 95.8, he may be an option. He's in my team. Uh, Hugh McCluggage, very expensive McCluggage, um, but he had a good 2020 by averaging 1 and 1.5 and put him up for selection this year, but we'll go down, we'll go under the radar, likely making him a pod. Uh, Zap Bailey, he had a decent 2020 average same player with a few times here and there. After having three seasons, the last season being his breakout season, he could be ready to go off. However, very risky. Good avoid, McInerney, Gordon and Grundy are better. Uh, Mitch Robertson, uh, Robertson fell off in 2020 with an average in 77.9. His time is up, it's not an option. Sad to say he should stick to Twitch for now. Yeah, but with McInerney, I mean, he lost his David PB status. He's not... Would it be good? I mean, seven months left, yeah? Um... Gordon Grundy just better than that. On to Generous Giants, or Giant. Uh, Josh Kelly for the best options. Um, he, yeah, he's probably the best option. Uh, Jelly's been an option for many years now. In the past four years, he's averaged over 110, so how could you look past him as an option? The high price is there for a reason. Look to get him in your team. Same with Lucky Whitfield. Obviously, he converted from a mid forward to a defender, uh, making him a certain starter probably. Uh, whether you start him or get him in later, he's someone that you should have in your defense by the end of the year. Uh, Canelio, uh, Cogs had a rough 2020 as he averaged 98.4, which is far from his best. He was very similar to Cripps, you know, low price, not the best season, um, and, you know, cheaper price he could could be. Um, Nick Haynes, he had a career best year with averaging 98.4, but a shaky end as in the first 10 rounds, only had, only two games he didn't average, he didn't go under 100, but from round 12 and on, he only got 100 once, as he started getting tagged and just fell off. Hopefully he can bounce back, and, uh, from that horrid second half. And make himself an option. Uh, rookies, uh, Jacob Weir. Jacob plays as a halfback that can push out to the wing, and with the punch of Zach Williams, he could slot into that role and create some cash. 
Uh, Tanner Bruin. Uh, Tanner Bruin was the first selection of the draft for the Giants. Tanner's not likely to get a game due to how stuck the Giants midfield is and has had injury setbacks in 2019, forcing him to only play two games. Uh, but keep an eye out from during the preseason. I'm sorry if you can hear my mum, she's working from home <laughs> due to COVID reasons. Um, so if you can hear it, I apologise, but there's nothing I can do. Um, uh, mid price slash pods, Harry Perriman, 505k. Perriman's had a breakout season in 2020 with an average of 94, 94. And we have a low ownership, although there are better options for someone his price. But if you want to risk it, he's your man. Uh, Phil Davis. Yeah, Davis had many injury setbacks last year being the worst. Um, this has made his price pretty cheap. If he gets back, back to his best of average 78, 79, at his price, 290, averaging 80s, that's pretty good. Um, and yeah, he could actually make some cash, but although injury prone, I mean, what do you expect? I'm also eating lunch, so. <laughs> Be mindful because your boy's hungry. Yeah, it was quite good off by now. Um, under John Cat, uh, best um, best options. Obviously, Dangerfield's been one of the best uh, players in the last decade. Has missed a beat, however. Um, apparently, he's copped an injury, um, and he's likely to miss the preseason. So that is kind of that has affected his pick. Him as an option a lot. So uh, yeah, just be just be careful with Dangerfield. Sam Minigola, uh, Minigola peaked in 2020 averaging 107.8, but when uh, when there's a pod this year will be easier. People are starting, I'm sure the ownership will be high. This is a man you should be considering. Same with Tom Stewart and uh, Hawkins. So Stewart, uh, one of the most consistent uh, defenders, uh, averaging 100.1, and that is with the 18 where he got injured. Uh, Stewart is someone to consider this year. He could be a perfect match to lay the Lloyd. A Hawkins had his best year in 2020. Sons of the Hayes were averaging 105.8 with his highest score being 204 uh, in round 12. For a tall forward, that's very good. If he continues his form, he's someone to consider. At the same time, he's a tall forward. Like, at the end of the day, he is a tall forward. So, you know, he could just go back to what he was before. Yeah, averaging just like his 70s, his 80s. After all, he's Cooper Stevens. Uh, Cooper was co-captain of the Falcons and averaged 25 disposals in his two games before getting injured, which ruled him out for the season. This was in 2019. Um, Cooper didn't get a goal in 2020, but with a solid preseason, uh, he looks he looks primed and ready to go, and should be in rain for a debut in round one. And mid process points are Mark Blitzovs. Uh, Blitzovs had his best season in 2020, averaging 98.9 average. Um, Sorry, um, and if you could go that one step further, it could be a good pod in this cheap to pay other primos, especially with that daily DPP status. So, uh, Joel Selwood, 445, very tempting. Um, Selwood has been a great player for the past 10 years, but has fallen off in terms of super coach of 2019-2020 average in 80s. And has had many injury problems in 2020, but people need to remember how he averaged over 100 from 2009 to 2018. If he can stay fit and return to that form and his price, he, he's very tempting to pick. Uh, who to avoid Jeremy Cameron. Uh, although his change club is tempting, but personally this man just isn't a super coach player as top forwards and never really been that good. And obviously with Hawkins being there, it'll be hard to get solid score. Luke Dalhouse, um Yeah, he, he's just shit. He's just shit. Um Gold Coast Sun's best options, uh here in Greenwood. I'll, I'll say Hugh Green and Took Miller, they're basically the same. They had a great twenty twenty. Um I'll say Greenwood lost his DPP status. Uh, but yeah, these guys would be solid pods, honestly. Uh, Matt Rowe, yeah, this is a, yeah, the youngster that shocked everyone is finally back and hopefully this year can stay fit and have a top season. However, only if four games under his belt, it may be a risky pick for that price. Here's the thing, Matt Rowe, um, personally, he's not for me. At the end of the day, this guy has had four seasons. He took every, he took the season by, he took those first four games by storm. Um, yeah, obviously he's getting 150s, 170s, like he was amazing. But um, it's because teams slept on him. The guy was a, it was his first four games. So no, and obviously in the game he got injured, he was getting tagged. So it looked like he was set to you know, not have his impact at the most. If this is an impactful player, teams will now, coaches will be like, oh, okay. We saw what he did last year. You know, let's get on him now. So he'll get, he'll get tagged a lot more this year. And so I don't think, I don't think this year. In my opinion, I don't think so. 
Um, in terms of rookies, Sam Flanders. Uh, Flanders had a few good uh, games in 2020. They were horrid, but with a full preseason. Okay, um, yeah, Sam Flanders. Uh, Flanders had a few games in 2020. They were horrid, but with a full preseason and a second year in, he may have developed a bit and a bit more, and at a decent price, he could be ready to finally show what everyone he, everyone what he's made of. Same with, same with Sharp. Sharp didn't live up to expectations, but in second year system, he could build off and be an option for players. Uh, Jez McLennan, uh, pick 23 in 2018 draft, hasn't got his opportunity, but two years in the system, he could finally break the barrier and show his ability to intercept and perform a rebound, form as a rebound defender as he was meant to. We do avoid McPherson, yeah, he, he basically he flopped. He averaged 57.1 and he dropped by about 250k, like he, he flopped. Um, yeah, this is probably a controversial one, but um, Elijah Hollins. So Hollins was primed um, to potentially be. Your boys in his bathroom. Actually, being the number one pick, but after Terry's ACL, he uh, got put down the seventh. Unfortunately, ACL injuries aren't anything to sleep on. Typically, these guys are injury prone, so I'll avoid this man and select an option like a Perkins or a Campbell. Uh, on to Melbourne, uh, the best options. Gone. Yeah. I mean, it's gone. Get him in your team. Uh, Oliver. Yeah, he had a career best. In my opinion, he was all Australian, but he didn't get that. Um, yeah, look to get in your team. Uh, Petrarca, yeah. But also, his DPP status has affected him heavily. I thought he was going to be a forward mid, uh, but apparently not. But yeah, same as Oliver, try to get him in your team. At the same time, if you have to pick one or the other, I'm picking Clay. Um, Bowen Mel, yeah, these two are in the same barrier as both selected in 2020 draft by the Demons. Uh, they'll both uh, perform well in the NAB League games, and are in contention to the debut early this year. I can see these two for the bench at least. Same with Rossman, uh, he's someone to look at. With comparisons to Isaac Smith, this man has averaged 16 disposals and 5 months throughout practice matches in preseason. He can play forward and midfield and sometimes, uh, so, sometimes there's someone to have a look at. Uh, mid price slash pods for the Demons. Uh, Brayshaw, Brayshaw has been declining the form since his best uh, in 2018. I can't see it, sorry. Um, 2018, uh, as he, I mean, he got third in the Brownlow that one year. He did really well. Um, average like 97, I think. Uh, but it, obviously, he's fallen off, averaging 80s over the last two years. Uh, but keep an eye on it because he really returned to that best for a while. I mean, he's definitely something to look at. Uh, Jack Viney. Um, he had a career best year in 2020, averaging 99.6, and with three massive scores with highest being on A6. Um, he could be a pod, however, he's a bit inconsistent and very expensive for someone like someone that doesn't even have an average 100. Um, Stephen May, probably 17 in terms of price. Um, yeah, his best uh, career. Um, he finally showed what he can do and impress many people. After so many injuries, uh, he only had one score less than a ton from round 12. Uh, if you turn that one step further and have that form at the start throughout the entire season, well, you can't look past him now. Big Ben Brown. Big Ben hasn't really been an option as he usually averages 70s to 80s and was a high and a higher price. But after the horrible 2020, only played nine games and averaging 48.4, his price has dropped massively and now is an option. Especially new cars with the likes of Tom, uh, uh, Tom Oliver, Clay Norva, and Petrarca kicking it to him, and the departure of Tom McDonald, it seems like this year could be his year. Uh, who to avoid? Uh, Marty Hall. Yeah. Um, Money Hall unfortunately did his, uh, injured his ACL and be out for the majority of the season, so fortunately not. Uh, Nathan Jones. Jones has been has been has had a great career, but fortunately his time is up. He has become a rotational player at his age with only playing eight games, averaging 54 in 2020. Uh, although his price is very tempting, look for other options. Um, Port Adelaide, uh, best options. Yeah, um, I'm a big fan of this man, Mr. Travis Boak. He's brilliant in my opinion. I love him. Uh, both went under the radar in 2020 as the loss of his DPP status was his downfall, but he made people pay for forgetting about him with a career best year with average of 109.9 and would be on for another great year. Here's an option. I made the mistake of not getting him. I chose Luke Runner him and that obviously cost me. Um, yeah, if you know him, you know, I guess. Um, yeah, but yeah, I won't look past him this year. I, I said every week, get him in, get him in, get him in. I never, I never did. I never pulled the trigger and ultimately it cost me. Um, another point midfielder, Tom Rockliffe. Uh, yeah, he went under the radar. Uh, yeah, the pick uh, had a shaky start in 2020. only got one time after the first five games, and obviously he got dropped because he wasn't playing well. When he came back, he went managed for everyone. Wait, this is to be in this poor team. 
with only having one score below 100 from round 9. The pig looks a bit... Pig looks like a massive pod that could be beneficial to your team, sorry. This is a lot of talk in my mouth, this game try, I'm struggling. A rooks in Jackson, Jackson Meade, under 2019 draft year, draft year is apparently higher rated at the club and is in contention to play early games. I mean, he's the only really one. I think um, there's a defender, I'm not sure, I don't know about pod, I'm not going to lie, I don't know much. Um, me pro slash pods, only ones, yeah, only ones had his best year yet, uh, but career best. Imagine 1.4 since moving to him. Um, however, Broken and Rockcliffe are likely better options, and he's a very high price, so I'd recommend it. Jai Dixon, another poor player with the career best. Dixon took charge and made himself known with averaging 92.8 and 4 tall 4. That is impressive. Could he go that one step further? I hope he can, but at the same time, he's starting around 500. I just don't think it's worth it. Um, another forward would be Gray. Uh, he's been a great player for so many years, but fallen off a bit with averaging 91.4. But if you can find some consistency in his game and perform on a weekly basis again, he's definitely someone to consider. Um, Zach Butters. Um, like other poor players, Butter. Sorry, Pasta. <laughs> um, Butters had his best season of averaging 87.8. If you can take his game that one step further and get consistent scores, then he could be a massive pod. I'm sure people are considering. Cons Considering, considering. This one's more risky. I was going for him in the void one, but then I saw his forward status. Um, one time he's a decent year, as he averaged 85.6 and his second year that he fell. The thing that makes this pick so interesting, obviously, like I said, is his DPT status of him being a forward. As well, which puts him in contention as a potential pod. This is a massive risk. I took this risk last year and it was a disaster. It really cost me the season, basically. So, yeah. Put a void. Dan Houston. Houston was supposed to be the breakout star as he was set to play in midfield in 2020, but he just didn't live up to his hype. Live up to his hype, nice. Uh, live up to his hype as he averaged 91.1 with only 6 100s in 15 games. It's not terrible, but for a top 6 defender, it isn't good enough and it doesn't look like much will change. And his price is an option this year, at least to start. Uh, Yodi Yodi said he did his job by reducing cash, but that is it for the man. Uh, he is an option this year. Hopefully, he can build off last year and make himself an option next year. But not this one. Uh, onto the Saints, uh, best options still in the uh, Jack still. Uh, he had his best year yet, earning himself the third highest player of the year, uh, highest uh, price player of the year. It was obviously an option, <laughs> obviously, uh, an option for this year. However, he had one really good year. It depends, is he going to follow that up? Is he worth that 650? In my opinion, I don't think so. He's not going to be in my turn. Uh, Ron Marshall. Ron has been forced to be reckoned with for the past two years. Has been forced to be reckoned with past four years, averaging 110 2019 and 103.7 in 2020. And with his DPP status, he's a certain starter. He should be your F1, F2 at least. So to say. Rookies, there aren't any. Not to handle the list. And we probably slash pods. Um, Zach Jones. Uh, Jones averaged 92.1 in 2020. And if he can get some consistency in his game, he could be a viable option. Uh, same with Brad Crouch, and his new Carlos Crouch could get back to his best form and could go one step further and make himself an option at a cheap price. It's tempting to pick. Do avoid, yeah, anyone who's in still Marshall, obviously, these two. Um, yeah, look, I'm not gonna lie, this is taking this this PowerPoint took me over 12 hours to make, so I kind of just <laughs> I just I couldn't do it anymore. Um, onto Sydney, best options are Jake Lloyd, 656.4, that is very expensive, but. He was phenomenal in 2020, averaging 122.2 in Hoyne, only having one game that was under 100, which was his first round. So this man got over 100 from round 2 to round 17-18. You know, it's just ridiculous. Uh, Luke Parker. Parker's averaged over 100 for the past three years and could be an option for your team. Um, yeah, listen. It's just that, really. Isaac Heaney. His Heaney season in 2020 was ruined due to injury that put him out for the season. Nice to make sense. And we all know what this man is capable of. Uh, he could be an option. Obviously, he's a bit cheaper. If you place midfield, then I mean, there's no reason to move faster. On to their rookies are uh, Brian Campbell, mid forward, 189. Uh, the senior coming player in pick five of the 2020 draft showed his ability through the NAB All Stars Futures game. Uh, this was before the grand final. On the, on the morning before grand final. Uh, when he started with kicking three goals for Ford in this process and got best on ground, uh, this man is someone to consider in your team. Uh, pick four, Logan McDonald. Uh, he'll play for the Swans in 2021, obviously. And the top four is looking to make a name for himself. And with the potential absence of Buddy, 
obviously got injured again. Uh, it could take the lead by storm. However, it can be hit and miss with 12 forwards as one week. They could get a 150 in the next 30 as the score's mainly based off goals. Um, Will Gould. Gould didn't get a go in 2020, but I've known a decent season in Sanford. I think he averaged 73, but that was 73 fantasy points. Will be 50, 60 at the same time for a rookie. That's not bad. Uh, but this may be easier to finally debut at his price. He should be in your teams if he gets the opportunity. Who plus slash pod? I've said all this minute before. Franklin, I'd be one of the best forwards of all time, but he has had many, has had many injuries over the past couple of years, and especially with missing the entire 2020 season. Although he has had another injury setback, he can get fit and stay that way. Um, at his price, knowing what he's capable of, it will be hard to pass up, especially with the lack of forward options. Callum Mills, uh, Mills had a breakout year in 2020, averaging 101.4, and can hopefully build off that in 2020 and make him a lock in defence for years to come. However, he's at a, he's at a higher price, and there are better options than Mills. Better options than Mills. Um, Josh B. Kennedy, Kennedy's been sold and under play for many years, as you go under the radar, as people have forgotten how good he was as he averaged over 100 from 2012 to 2017 and did in 2019 as well. However, he didn't have the best 2020 as he had injury setbacks, but if he can get fit and healthy, he could be a problem in the future, and with that price, he's tempting to look at. Who avoids Sam Gray? Yeah, Gray had a bad 2020 season, averaging 51, making one of the biggest flops of the year in terms of players from other clubs. Uh, he barely played and didn't seem to get any better avoid this man. Okay. Now, this this is the big one. This is going to take some time to go through. So, West, Western Bulldogs, I'll go through it. Each of these players um, individually. Uh, best options, I put best options slash avoid. So obviously these are the Bulldogs midfield, McRae, Bont, Hunter, Trelaw, Libertary Smith. But the Dogs midfield is stacked this year, but too many good players means that they could take points off each other. It's very similar to West Coast, obviously. You see Tim Kelly doesn't do that well, Tom Shea doesn't do that well. Um, so although these players are all class personally, I don't think they'll stand out this year due to having too many players. Which is why it's best options. So these are the best options for Bulldogs, but also in my opinion. I don't think Bulldogs is the way to go this year. So we'll go through. Uh, Jack McRae, in terms of Supercoach, is the best. You know, he gets his four disposals. At the same time, Trula coming in. Also, when was it early in the year, Jack McRae got stuck on the wing because of how many midfielders they had. He got put on the wing, he was getting shit scores, and as soon as he went back in, he went off. Due to Trula coming in, he could go back to that wing. Um, it's not good. Hinder it, which is why the two new players is the thing, because it puts them in one position. Same with Bont and Pelly. He could go up forward. Well, apparently it's a forward to the Australian. Um, but he can go up forward because of how many people in the midfield. So he can go up forward, get less points. Especially because he gets, and he also, obviously Bont Pelly gets tagged. Lucky Hunter, I mean, he's kind of just the irrelevant one. Same with, uh, Libertorians. Um, Amtra Law, uh... I don't know what this one, because I don't know how he's going to go. Um, maybe if he learns how to kick the ball, well then yeah, I'm there for him, but unfortunately he can't. Um, top of the Toro, I mean, yeah, 570, I don't think it's worth it. It'll be in the same boat. Bally Smith, um, yeah, 494 is cheap, but um, unfortunately he lost that DPP status, but just hinder that, and now it's just, it's just a no. He could actually go back in the forward line as well, due to how many midfielders. So yeah, best of it. Continuation of the best options. Now, Josh Dunkley, I know you're saying, oh, well, you just said all these guys, but Josh Dunkley's part of it. But Dunkley's in the same boat as other players, obviously. The only difference is he has that forward status. He has that forward status. So, do you like a forward? He might have to. You know, hopefully he can pull one of those hundreds like he did last year. But yeah. And next one, uh, Caleb Daniel. Daniel had a career best in 2020, average 101.5. If you can build off that, and be, you can maybe be a top six defender. Rookies. Jamara Urgel Hagen, and I said I'll talk about this one, but the number one draft pick will play for the Doggies this year, but this money from a, for a four just isn't worth it in my opinion. Although this man is a top player, obviously he has number one draft pick for a reason. Um, the Dogs have many forwards that will take points off it, such as Norden, Aaron Norden, Josh Bruce, obviously Martin slash English, so Martin goes in the ruck, English may go forward, English in the ruck, Martin goes forward, self explanatory. Hell, even Bontempelli. However, you know, so it might get points off him, and 270k for a rookie forward, I feel like it's not worth it. Um, however, like I said, he's not more big for a reason, so you just got to watch out for him. Just watch out for him. And that's it. Um, I didn't put who to avoid for Bulldogs, because obviously I had best, um, and mid-price is literally not the best, it's probably Eastern Wood. So, I didn't put any. Yeah, if you saw, I didn't put any for Giants either, because it's kind of self-explanatory on who to avoid for that time. Um, but yeah. 
I, I guess that I guess that's it. Um, sorry, I know that was a really long video. Um, but thank you all so much for watching. Obviously, I got a lot of uh, support um, from that stream the other night, uh, the other week, which is really good. I think it was like 70 views was my seventh high, my second highest view video, which is great. Um, but yeah, I hope this helped you guys. Pick your teams. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll, I'll see you guys um, further towards the season. I'll give you an update, and yeah, bye.